point. I'm glad you said that. Okay. All right. So for advanced spiritual students, especially Hawkins students and, uh, and also students of enlightenment, there, it's like, yes, there are, there are states of bliss, there are states of ecstasy, uh, there, there are states of exquisite presence. And yet, there are also a lot of things on the way to those states. Um, uh, and so there's, there's, there's levels. Um, also, the other thing to understand is one can be at a very advanced level of consciousness and not feel bliss as well. And that's also, uh, that also does happen. Because you're resolving stuff. Um, uh, you're resolving uh, a lot of a lot of stuff, and you, you know, like, and this is what all the saints sort of, you know, if you read stories of the saints, they'll often like moan that they were in states of exquisite bliss and they lost it. And they go, you know, God, why has God abandoned me? You know, I've been a good saint so far this year. You know, why has this exquisite <laughs> bliss suddenly disappeared? You know, what's happened? Have I done anything wrong? You know, why has and, and they're still saints, you know, and they probably still have miracles happening left, right and centre around them. Um, there's a famous saint, I won't say her name, uh, in more recent history that had this as well. And uh, it's, um, first of all, it, you're not yet at an advanced level to be able to contextualise it correctly. Yeah, so, like, the exquisite states are an act of grace, yeah, and you can't see your karmic the karmic load that you have, and you can't see the karmic load of the collective. Uh, so you can be at a very advanced level of consciousness and not be in a state of bliss. And the miracles can be happening left, right and centre. Also realise, as you're transcending to more and more advanced levels of consciousness, you're also resolving uh, very advanced levels of consciousness. So there's the, for example, there's the level of the void, emptiness. The level of the void emptiness is already a very advanced level. Uh, you know, it's beyond form, and yet it's uh, it's devoid of the absolute presence of love. And uh, in that state, which is very very advanced, you know, you'd have probably have miracles happening left, right, and center. But there is like a a duality that needs to be transcended to getting the absolute presence of love. And yet you're you're m way more advanced than the m vast majority of people. You know, the ego, uh, the ego can't contextualize what's been from higher levels of consciousness. So there can be a lot of, um, uh, the remnants of the ego can be unhappy when suddenly a state of bliss is lost. Uh, the remnants of the ego can also miss, uh, miss certain states. So you might be doing spiritual work and you might go in suddenly, you might pick up the Course of Miracles and go into a state of bliss for three weeks. And then you might be doing the Course of Miracles for the next three years, and you're just feeling bored, you know. And so, you know, th there can be like a missing of the joy or of a spiritual state that one had before. Um, also, this is also a thing, as you get to more advanced spiritual levels, you, f you find you can't enjoy the things you used to enjoy. You know, like, oh, I used to really love eating ice creams, and I loved, like, EastEnders, and uh, I used to sit in front of EastEnders and watch it. And now I watch EastEnders and within two minutes it's like, I don't want to enjoy this any longer. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's like, oh, I, I love going to these parties, you know, there's this loud music and everyone's screaming at each other. It's such a, <laughs> such a, such a blast. I really enjoyed that as a teenager. And you go in there looking for that same sort of happiness and then suddenly you just walk out, you know, you just, you know, and I used to enjoy that so much. And I used to enjoy EastEnders. I really used to like be the highlight of my day. And there's no, there seems to be, and you want to enjoy it, but then you take a taste of it, and then you just leave. And it seems like something, and there seems to be something that misses. I really used to enjoy EastEnders, and uh, I really used to enjoy the, uh, that loud banging music. And uh, I can't enjoy it any longer. I don't even want to enjoy it. Like, and you feel a bit sad, like you've lost you've lost something that's missing. There's a yearning for the time I used to enjoy EastEnders. And I used to like, oh, I used to meet my friend and we used to go out and eat donuts the whole evening. 
and he was my favourite friend for school. And then you go and meet your friend and says like there's a new flavour of donuts or whatever. And you, and you just want to leave, you know, and you can't feel like, you don't feel like you connect with him any longer. And there's sadness, you know, he was my best friend, I used to have donuts with him throughout my, throughout my school years. And it's true, you do feel sad, there's like a loss that you don't enjoy these things any longer. And, uh, and that maybe, maybe, and surely you should, surely you should still enjoy loud banging music and, and surely that's, uh, that's enjoyable as well. And EastEnders is fun and uh, my donut buddy is also good. And something seems very, very sad of a loss of a lot of stuff, uh, you know, and that's true. As you go to more and more advanced states, there can be waves of grief. Um, and you're not sure why you're grieving and why you can't enjoy things you used to enjoy. Um, but that's, you know, it's, I would say it's a positive thing, even though the ego can get very, very upset or, or feel it's doing something wrong or doesn't have an appetite to be in certain environments or speak to certain people or it no longer seems to be able to enjoy things. Um, and this can even get more difficult because there are some things that in this society everyone should enjoy. And if you don't enjoy them, there's something wrong with you. You know, like, everyone should enjoy EastEnders. And if you don't enjoy EastEnders, then you don't belong in this society because everyone talks about EastEnders all the time. You're the only person in this country that doesn't like EastEnders. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, then suddenly, like, you're, and you're an outcast. You're doing this stuff. You can't talk to anyone about EastEnders. You seem outcast and, and something starts, you feel like crying. You don't belong in it. There's something wrong with you. All these, and these are really legitimate things that happen as you do more and more spiritual work. You know, and these, you can start to feel you miss things, you don't belong with people, you can't enjoy activities you used to enjoy. Um, and, and actually that, those tears, all I'd say, that sadness, it's not that you're doing anything wrong, but you've got to, those, that sadness will eventually pass and it'll be recontextualized. It's like, even if everyone in, in England likes the EastEnders. I'm the only person left that in the in this country that doesn't. It will be recontextualized. Like you know, eventually it's recontextualized. Like other people can talk about EastEnders as much as they want. Now, I might not want to stay for a five-hour debate on EastEnders. Just sort of go in and allow them to carry on. And then I might walk out. But you still will, that presence that will eventually come after the sadness. You'll know it's the truth that supports you. As you get to high levels of consciousness, you can have periods of boredom. You can have periods... Boredom is just, I haven't got any my usual toys that I like mm -hmm. to play with. And there's no toys left. God hasn't, you know, I've given all my toys up for God and I'm just so bored. What's the point of living? That's normal. You can feel, you can go into, you can go into all kinds of very esoteric spiritual states. Uh, or boredom is a common one, or feeling um, feeling infinite peace without, inf you know, like if I'm in a state of infinite peace, but I haven't got, I'm not in ecstasy, I'm not in bliss, and I'm not, then I'm doing it wrong, or something's missing. No, sometimes you sit with infinite bliss, and then you get to infinite love for a while, and then you go back to infinite peace. But these are, it's not like uh, you, you cannot see them the karmic picture behind the universe. It's best to have the thing of give your life, give your life to God and you might be in a state of bliss today, you might not. You might be in infinite peace, you might be in boredom, you might be, but don't have a judgment about it. It's usually a great thing, you know, because you don't know what, you don't know the big picture of why these different fluctuating states come. You know, if, if there are miracles happening left, right and centre around you, know that you're at a very advanced level of consciousness, but you're still, there, there is a picture which you can't see behind that's hidden with your past lifetimes, with the collective karma that's going on. And even if miracles are happening left, right and centre, you might not always be in a state of bliss or peace or happiness or joy. But that, that is evidence, the miraculous is the evidence. Um, each time you let go of something, there can be tears and sadness for a long period of time because, and you might not know even why you're sad, but it's because, you know, who, I mean, is, is the observer sad? No, the observer is not sad, but things are being lost from the ego. You know, it used to, it used to enjoy donuts, it used to enjoy EastEnders, 
it used to enjoy loud parties and suddenly you might end up crying for no reason for like a few weeks and uh, and or you or you may have thoughts you're doing it wrong or if you had done you forgot to do your hourly course of miracles yesterday and therefore you're depressed today or something like that you know that's not it so um, these uh, these states they do pass or go to the observer of them or fill them out but also know that it's not like guaranteed that you're going to be in bliss all the time uh, and uh, <clears throat> and that's okay uh, I think it's really good if you're having miracles happening left right and center like you know, I suddenly won the lottery, uh, and people are hoovering my house, and uh, and uh, and everyone tells me that their life goes well every time they meet me, and you're not in a state of absolute bliss. But that for me would be like God saying you're on the right track. Uh, you know, you are at a very advanced level of consciousness, but you know, but to keep keep going, you know, you don't always feel good even though you're at an advanced level. And that's a very complicated question. Because often when I, we talk about spirit, I, I don't like to make it that complicated. That you can be very, very advanced. Mir miracles be, can be happening left, right and centre. And yet you might be crying because you can't enjoy EastEnders any longer. You know, it's, it's very, very bizarre. It doesn't make sense. Someone will come in and say, you're not, you're not really spiritual. I and mean, if you're crying about not seeing EastEnders, you must be really bad. But not, not really. You're, you're still at a very advanced level. You can see the universe is supporting you. And the miraculous is happening, but not always in a state of bliss. These fluctuate. If you read the lights for the saints, they're often going to very profound places, and then they'll suddenly feel the loss of God. And they'll go into, like, oh, God has abandoned me, I've done something wrong. And they'll probably have miracles happening left, right, and center around them. And that's a very advanced understanding to know they're still connected, but there is deeper layers of things for why. You're not always going to be in a state of bliss, even though you're very, very advanced. So it's a very complicated question. But the miraculous, or if you stay true to your faith to God, and the miraculous has happened, and you haven't done anything like axe murdered someone or sort of done a bank robbery in the last few days, you're, pro you're still at a very advanced level of consciousness, you know, and, uh, um, and the miraculous is happening, but you're just resolving, and there's karmic things which are unexplainable for why you're not always in a constant state of bliss. Um, so it's a very advanced question, but uh, you know, I intuit. Uh, and sometimes you are, te tested is the wrong word, sometimes you have to go through phases and trust. You know, like uh, you just keep doing your Course in Miracles, someone steps on your foot, just you know, bless them and let it go, and carry on doing your Course in Miracles. Don't make a big story about it and have faith that for whatever reason some things are happening today which aren't that nice and it will clear you know and, and you don't know why because it's very very complicated why you're not feeling in bliss and why sometimes something bad might happen you see even something bad might happen and you're still in a very advanced level of consciousness which is paradoxically difficult to explain um, but I hope you can get it. There's a, there's a very complicated web of karma that you can't always see.